Most people think that PhD students are just super smart, but they're not. What makes them different is how they learn. A PhD teaches you how to take a totally unfamiliar topic and go from confusion to clarity super fast. You become an expert learner, and that's what I'm going to show you today, how to self-learn like a PhD in five easy steps. Let's check it out. So you're sat at home and now you've got this bubbling urge to learn something. Why do you want to learn that thing? In my experience, having an outcome that you're focused on means you'll be able to focus through that learning journey no matter what. For example, when I was learning Persian, I had Persian friends come in a visit that didn't speak English. I wanted to communicate with them. Also, learning to make my own t-shirts. Doing my PhD was just because I wanted someone to say, oh, there's Dr. Stapleton, isn't he great? He's so clever. But having clear motivation means that you'll be willing to get over the hurdles that you are going to encounter along the learning journey. Once you've worked out why you're learning, now you need a guide, a map. Now, I'm not talking about an individual teacher. In school, we're so used to having an individual kind of like teacher that teaches us all the things. Now, the thing is, is that individual teachers have their weaknesses and also their positives but here we need to make sure that we have a guide a map a journey that's laid out in front of us if you're learning something quite academic head over to something like this open courseware from mit and you can see here i've got the real analysis things and we're not looking for the content we're looking for the map so here we can go to lecture notes and find all of the things that these experts want you to learn about a particular topic i would use this as a guide not necessarily as the content through which I'm going to learn the material. But knowing that I need to learn about all of these things means that I am uh, clear about the direction I am heading. If it's something that you're not quite sure where you need to head, head over to this or head over to something like Harvard Online and then you see, you know, here, principles of biochemistry, self-guided, and then it will actually tell you all of the steps that you need to go through to kind of be good at this course. A really great guide, not necessarily content. If you want to learn about something very academic and niche, head over to uh, Google Scholar and here you can see I've put in OPV devices, but here yeah, this is the important thing. Review. Review. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A review article is an amazing sort of like a gift from researchers to the world where they take all of the stuff you need to know about a particular research field and put it in a single document for you to get an idea of the themes, the things you need to know about that field to be a true expert. So here you can see I've put in OPV devices review and then here we've got a review on recent progress. Oh, we like that. Indoor applications, a comprehensive review review on materials, technologies, and performance. Oh, 2023? Yes, that is exactly what I am looking for. And you can see then um, you get access to a really in-depth article that gives you all of the information you need to know about a particular subject. This process of going and finding maps, finding uh, guides for your learning is the number one thing that's going to cut down your learning from hours and days and weeks and months and years down to just a fraction of that time. Absolutely love it. Now, one of the tricks and the secrets about learning like a PhD student is that you no longer have to just barrel your way through content in a linear fashion. I find that the best PhD students actually learn in a non-linear way, and this is the thing, follow your curiosity. It doesn't matter if you're perusing a list like this and you're like, oh, that's boring, that's boring. Oh, I wonder what this is. Extreme and intermediate value. Oh, I'm going to click at that. So you just follow your curiosity. And if you get to a point where you're like, oh, I don't understand what this means, you'll have to take a step back. But if I started with the step back, I'd be so bored because I'm not sort of like following the thing that makes me curious. Does that make sense? So just follow your curiosity. The best PhD students I ever have met and have learned a lot start with their curiosity. Start a curiosity log. Write down all of the questions you've got about a research field that you want to answer. And then starting with that in mind, it's easier to learn the foundations because you know you're working back up to that really sort of like intriguing curiosity gap. So that is where I would go. Follow your curiosity, not a linear fashion like they teach you in school. Because uh, sometimes starting with the foundations is just so boring because you're not understanding where it's going to get you. This approach allows you to keep that uh, motivation and that curiosity at the front of your learning journey.
The third thing PhD students do to learn is they collect. They are hoarders of information. And these days there are so many places where you can hoard information. Online, you can go onto something like Wikipedia if you really want to, just to get an overview. Then you can find out actual research experts. So one thing I like to do is head over to Google Scholar. Let's head back there. And I look at these people, look at this. In this one, I'm like, oh, I need to go check out this person so I can click on them and find out what they're producing. Then I will look at all of their stuff, all of their recent articles and be like, oh yeah, I like that one. Oh, I'll look at that. Because they're a researcher that's researching something that you're particularly interested in, it means you'll probably want to know what else they're doing. When you find a researcher that you like the look of, just stalk them. Find out all of the stuff they've published and it'll be very likely that their other works will also interest you as well. You become a hoarder of information and a stalker of professionals. <laughs> You can also use a tool like Consensus. Heading over to Consensus and doing one of their pro searches means that it gives you a list of people that you should follow. So scroll down, top contributors to this research question and this area of interest that I wanna learn about. So here you can see we've got these people, two papers, this person, this person, this person, this person. All of this is very important. I would want to know probably who these people are, where they work, and the sorts of um, research they're putting out of their lab. So becoming a hoarder of information has never been easier, and now it's about synthesizing it, using your curiosity to guide you through all of this content. And if a question pops into your mind, why not head over to something like Consensus and just pop it in? This isn't sponsored, by the way. I just think it's a good tool. So you can go here and ask a, a question about research, or you can go over to their actual sort of like research page Page and uh, find a paper that answers that question. I really, really like the uh, ability to be able to hoard information. It's never, ever been easier. Collect books. Popular science books are amazing because they give you the ability to get information in a much more interesting, lighthearted way than textbooks ever did. Now the world and the internet is full of information pretty much on anything you would want to learn. So go and collect that information. Absorb it, but follow your curiosity. If you're finding something's a bit boring when you're reading it, just move on. It's absolutely fine. I've done it all the time. It's never really hurt me. Don't necessarily start with foundations. Start with that curiosity and build the foundation underneath it. It's so much easier. Another thing PhD students learn very early on is they need to apply what they've learned early and often. PhD students need to be able to actually put the knowledge to work. And so you need to put that knowledge to work as well. If it's something really academic, just reproduce a paragraph about what you're learning. Um, create a little diagram about that thing that you've learned about. Reproduce the main schematics that you've just learned about from memory. Applying this knowledge is how you really understand that you've got it into your brain and that it's not just sort of like passively um, being washed over your brain but not being stored. Using knowledge early and often really solidifies that learning and PhD students who spend too much time going through their books, going through the notes and not applying it really struggle later on. So apply that knowledge early and often, even if you have to explain it to someone who's not super interested in it, but will listen to you because they're nice and friendly. That is awesome. And uh, yeah, apply, apply, apply just stop reading at one point and try to produce. That is the only way you truly gain knowledge. And the last thing you need to know about, about learning like a PhD student is that you need to do this every single day, almost. You can take a day off every so often, but the one thing about doing a PhD, what it teaches you is that you are facing the same problems and the same learnings day in, day out and it goes in just slowly. The one thing even now, years after doing my PhD, when I learn something, if I wanna learn something deeply and understand it and be able to apply it, is I do a little something every single day. And that is so important, every single day day, do something towards that learning. Sometimes you don't feel like it and I get it and we'll talk about how to get over that just in a second. But 
do something every single day. When I was learning Persian, I had an Anki deck that I went through every single day, even if I didn't really feel like it. It was just about spending five minutes to 10 minutes a day, rather than going, you know what, on Saturday, I'm gonna spend an hour going through my books. It doesn't work like that. Learning something, learning a field, learning anything is about exposure to that thing day after day after day to the point where it becomes second nature. So just every day, even if you can just muster up a little bit of energy for five minutes, use that five minutes to do a little bit of a sketch of the thing you want to reproduce and learn about. Just read something, go watch a five minute video on YouTube. It's so much better to expose yourself little by little, microdose this information into your brain rather than sitting down and cramming it for a whole hour. Trust me, little by little, that's how it works. Now, we've also got this. If you find yourself getting bored, if you find yourself frustrated, switch modes, not projects. This is one of the things PhD students learn very early on, is that if you're learning something new, and you get bored or frustrated, don't go, just go to this other like topic because it's refreshing. No, just change modes. Read about something, do something to learn that thing, or teach someone. Just stay with the topic but change the mode in which you are um, interacting with it. That is a really great way of amplifying your success with learning and uh, it really helps you from that overwhelm where you've got so many things going on and you're like, oh, you know, if I just do a little bit of this, a little bit of this, no, 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 that's not how it works. Just change modes, not projects. The last thing you need to know is work with your energy. The energy you have throughout a day is finite. I have a lot of energy in the morning, so I put learning, hardcore learning, where I need a lot of brain power in the mornings. And then in the afternoon, I can do the other stuff that you know doesn't require as much energy. But each day you only have so much, and you need to work with your own sort of body clock, I guess. If you have more energy in the afternoon, put your learnings there, not in the mornings. Work with what works with you, and each PhD student that I've ever seen and worked with works differently. Some are night owls, some are morning people, some are afternoons, whatever it is, work with you. And the last thing is reduce friction to your learning. Don't just think, oh, I'm gonna go and sit and do a thing, no. Where do you work best? For me, it was always a library, a quiet space. Go to those places. Engineer your environment for your learning. Don't do it where it is gonna be a struggle for you. So all of that put together is how you learn like a PhD student. If you're actually starting a PhD, go check out this video where I talk about all the tricks no one tells you. Ooh, you'll love it.